what a way to start. In their hearts, true competitors love nothing more than to do battle on the world's biggest stage. And in the pantheon of marble racing, there's nothing bigger than this. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Woods, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the first ever installment of Marbula One here at the Savage Speedway. As we saw in qualifying, this track has not been kind to the Savage Speeders. Our grid lined up and ready to go. It's the O'Rangers at the start. Lights are on, and we're rolling around the turn. The O'Rangers lead coming off the grid. They all, nearly all, at the front opt to the outside. Ten laps in this race, and the O'Rangers got a bad jump off the ramp. They fall back to third place. Galactic and the Hazers are up in front. Snowballs in fourth, hounding the top three. Outside of Galactic, way up front as we enter the front stretch for the first time. Galactic will have a narrow lead coming off the ramp. Can they hold it? They jump to the side a little bit, but they do hold the lead. Into the final lap of the opening Grand Prix of Marbula 1. Two to the outside, one to the end. That's the Hazers on the inside. Now they get a great launch off the jump and move into second place. Galactic still up in front. We'll launch around those curves. Snowballs holding in fourth and a big gap back to our pole sitters. The O'Rangers with Clementine off the final turn. On the front stretch, heading into the final term, I should say. Team Galactic up in front. The Hazers are going to close right up in on them around the final turn. It will be Team Galactic and Starry getting the win. For future sessions starting next race, the interval will be adjusted on the conveyor belt so that only two marbles will be on course at any time during qualifying. Sometimes the marbles can possibly get distracted as they come down this course, but more importantly, if there is an issue on any of the qualifying runs, it will only disrupt the other marble and not a whole group of six. To each their own. All right, Waspy will be first to cross the line for the Midnight Wisps. Knows the time to beat and is quicker. 30.05, that's over a one second quicker than anybody else. Waspy on provisional pole. Next up, the Savage Speeders to start off group number three. Well, they can tell you a little something about that. Speedy, the slowest of all qualifiers on their home circuit. This time, they have called up rapidly. The Savage Speeders look to set a better qualifying here in race number two. A little nudge off those middle berms, two of them in the middle of that sand section. Oh, and a big bump there right on that Chevron at the split. And that really slows down Mary from Team Primary. She's going to have two more sectors to try to claw that back. But she lost a ton of time rapidly across the line here. Good enough for fifth. As we begin lap number four in what's already been a frenetic race. Billy now out in front by, by one and a quarter. And Waspy has fallen off the conveyor belt. Landed on the finish line. Also hitting Rojo Dos while he got stuck at the pit exit. And we're going to have our first safety marble of the race. A potentially dangerous situation down by the conveyor belt. Let's see if we can try to figure out what happened here. So... I believe that the safety marble may come out and, and get Waspy going again, if, although the field is coming pretty close to that as well, so we'll have to see if any of them end up nudging him free again, and we'll be back underway, and I think that's going to happen. Let's see if anybody makes contact. We're back to green. All right. Only watch as Clutter stretches off into the distance. Across the line they come. They are going to be neck and neck again this time for third place. Clutter's lead a little under two tenths. Primary and Mallard gets the jump off of the conveyor belt. Mallard and Clutter trying to stretch the lead over Prim from Team Primary. Starry up into fifth right now. Into the far hairpin they go. A little nudge off that Chevron and a bump off the wall. We've got a lead change. Clutter takes the top spot. Mallard and Clutter have been going back and forth several times, and it looks like Clutter will try to protect the inside line coming off the conveyor belt this time. Mallard tries to snake his way through, and now we've got a big bunch up into third place. Primary trying to hold back the floodgates from Hazy and Starry. Getting on around that far hairpin. On to the front stretch now. Coming across the line. And the gap has under a second. Under eight tenths, in fact. Clutter and Prim. Also watch behind, Hazy seems to be showing a little bit of speed. Final lap, and look at the speed coming off there. A huge bump by Prim. Needs one more go, is gonna size him up down the pit straight and around into the front stretch. Are they gonna make the move to the outside? It's not gonna work. Clutter takes the win by five hundredths of a second over Prim from Team Primary. Hazy finishes in third and on the podium. Well in front of Mallard and Clementine. Waspy 
had pole position back at the O-Raceway. Fortunately, everybody knows what happened with the conveyor belt. Waspy just fine, though. He was hoping to set a darn good time here. 29.97, that's ahead of where we thought. But look at Waspy's time. Two and a half seconds better through the split. Four seconds clear at the line. Waspy obliterates the time that we thought with a 25.8. Rapidly living up to his name, exiting the belt there. Really, our top four is as spread as they've been for a while. This time, a little train beginning to develop behind Orangen. Bump off the walls there pretty hard, entering the hive. Can rapidly keep it off the walls? No, and that lets Pulsar take the lead. It really is a huge speed differential if you get hung up. Rapidly gonna have to fight back in these final couple of laps. Interesting strategy there. They're gonna be fairly close, 38 hundredths apart as they enter the final lap. Pulsar, quick off the belt. Rapidly, trying to track him down. This is a big speed boost also for Yellup, who tries to get by Waspy for third. Nothing there. Exiting the first sector. Meanwhile, up front, Pulsar. Stretching the lead. The Hive could make or break this entire race. They stay where they were. Pulsar, around the final turn, is going to cruise across the line and wins the Hive Drive Grand Prix. Rapidly in second, Waspy rounds out the podium in front of Smoggy and Yellup. Hey, how about this? Orangen up top goes four tenths quicker through sector number one as Rezzy comes across two seconds adrift. Orangen qualified second and then raced up to eighth in the last Grand Prix. Orangen ooh, bumps hard off of that curb at the entrance to the pit lane. How's that gonna hurt the time? Oh, and it did hurt the time quite a bit. Went from in the green to 1,500 hundredths off an Orangen. Penultimate lap of this nine lap Grand Prix, and it's still anybody's race. Orangen makes a move for second place. Tries to eye up Bolt as they head to the far corners. Around the hairpin up there onto the back stretch. And who's gonna get the better launch? They opt for different sides of the separation, and Orangen carried more speed around the turn and takes the lead. A bump off the attenuator for Bolt, and he might lose second place as well. Orangen back up front. And we have seen the Orangers run pretty well at different times in this season. Slow off that turn, onto the back stretch. Orangen, just a few corners to go. Can he keep it clean? Off to the right, hits the inside of the exit. Now through the penultimate turn. Cleanly onto the front stretch. Around the last turn, and Origin wins the Grand Prix at Greenstone. Bolt takes second, Yellup third. Limeline, a great recovery, up into fourth. Rojo Uno, then Momo. And Snowy, Smoggy, and Shock, and Yellow. Down the back stretch, big charge of speed coming here as they bump off that Chevron. Speedy right on the tail of Prim. Into the chicane. Neck and neck between the two of them. And now Prim will go to the pit lane. That'll let Speedy work around the outside. A drag race down the front stretch across the line. What was the gap there? Two hundredths. And just like that, Prim retakes the lead. Speedy to the inside, down the back stretch. Up to P1, exiting the first sector. Pulsar, Shock, Wispy, Snowy, Billy, and Smoggy make up the top eight. And now Speedy takes the pit lane again, and Prim breezes by back into first. Off the belt they come, 43 hundredths between them, but that gap seems to be coming down. Snowy gets in the draft just a little bit as they enter the second sector, even closer through the hairpins, into the chicane. As they exit here, this last turn can make or break a lap, and it is neck and neck once more. A bump down the front stretch, and look at this up the belt. Hold your breath for a second, because it's gonna be all speed from here. Who gets the jump, and it is speedy. Oh, but slow off of the drop, and Snowy takes the lead. Speedy goes high off of those curves. Doesn't have to worry too much behind, because that's a huge gap back to Prim and Mimo. Now Mimo on track, sitting 23rd in the standings. Our seventh place finisher back at the short circuit has gained a handful of places in all the races in which Mimo has contested, opting for that outside line there after going green through the first sector. Across the second and continuing to build over a second and a half clear. Mimo needing to keep it clean through the chicane. Around that turn, 
and 28-7-2 becomes the new benchmark. Smoggy, our second to last runner. Dare I say our penultimate runner in our penultimate race? <laughs> Maybe I will. Provisionally in the green. Smoggy, yet to qualify below fifth place in any Grand Prix so far this season, but needing to make up some gap here. Nearly three quarters of a second down. Final turn, Smoggy just misses out on pole. Seven hundredths down. And we're rolling, a slow start for Nemo as Smoggy takes the lead. Orangen also getting swarmed from the fourth place position and falls back halfway down the field and most of the field is stuck. We have a yellow flag and a major incident in sector one. Is this going to be a safety marble? Yes it is, the safety marble is deployed. Smoggy holds the lead up front for Nemo and Lime Lime, Rapidly and Billy, but look at all of the danger up top. So many marbles are stuck. The safety marble being deployed. Let's see if the field comes through and ends up trying to push them forward. As they snake around, heavy impact here. Oh, this is all going wrong. Nearly everybody is stopped and we've got a red flag. A disaster here at the Razway. Wispy also trying to get racy, but a train developing behind. To the outside, again goes Mimo and loses second place to Orangen. Tries to get it back off the Chevron and does. Great racing by Mimo and Orangen. And Mimo is now setting sights on Smoggy as we head into the final lap. One length apiece, all of them coming up the belt. This is still anybody's race. Smoggy, Mimo, Orangen. Bunching up here to the outside, Nemo a little nudge, and the block is laid down. Orangen gets by into second place, Smoggy tries to go down the inside, all three of them will. Orangen needing a little bit of speed, through the left-hander, off the Chevron, onto the pit straight, couple of corners to go. Smoggy, Orangen, not gonna be close enough, and Smoggy will not be denied. Orangen across the line in second place, Nemo and Wispy, Anarchy rounding out the top five. Rojo Dos, Rapidly, Pulsar, Razzy, Yellow, completing the top 10. And will not be helped by a provisional 12th place here. Now Clementon. Oh, Speedy has already started. Oh my gosh, this happened at the short circuit as well, but who is going to benefit or lose out? Clementon, hearing the ruckus behind, no action taken though. It seems like everything is fine. They're separated just enough. They can't see each other on any of the straights. Speedy is quicker. Clementon around the turn, 10th place, but what does Speedy have? For the Savage Speeders, they take pole. One runner left and it's Hazy. Has had to witness all of the drama that we just had on that run, that dual run. The Hazers well out in front in the championship, 90 points to 76 over the Savage Speeders. They don't have to start on pole or finish there. But they do need a good showing in the race, and Hazy can make things a little easier with a decent finish here. Half a second to make up. Around the final turn, Hazy. Disappointing, down in 15th. It's a little bit of a surprise. Hazy second to last. Then it's Momo. Mallard jumps him off the belt, and we get a lead change up front. Great move from Prim to take the lead. Speedy caught napping through the slower parts of the track. As they go through the tunnel, look at the draft, just ducking to the inside, but nothing there on the exit. Across the bridge, these top marbles all doing a very good job of avoiding careening into those blocks, but look at how close Speedy is. Look at the outside. Prim laying down the block and nothing there. Up the belt they come, just two tenths apart. Equidistant between the top three. Then it's Mallard, Clutter, Yellup, Hazy, and Rezzy. Hazy needs to get a move on, even though there's still a lot of laps left in this race. How late will he leave it? Grim's lead as big as it's been. Onto the pit straight, and around the final turn. Oh, and having a little trouble getting onto the belt. It's gonna be neck and neck on the exit. Speedy gets the better lead. Takes the top spot, and holds on to P1 for now. Oh, and you can definitely see Mallard closing up just a little bit. That is important because if Mallard does get by and the speeders finish second, they need the Hazers to be ninth or lower, and they're currently not there. But if they hold the lead, they will win the entire championship. We started this season at the Savage Speedway, and now 
Savage Speeders onto the front stretch, around the turn. They will win the race and the season. The Savage Speeders are the Marvel 1 World Champions.